We left off last time when I was uh, dragging out this hunk of oak uh, for the stretchers on the bottom of the table. I'm switching to oak because I don't think the cypress is nearly strong enough. Um, you know, people could put their feet on that little stretcher and like try to shove their chair out, etc. So we're going to go with oak and uh, probably stain it black because one, it's going to have footprints on it and two, this wood is a little stained already. So let's get it out and cut it up and see what we can do. I pulled this plank out of the river a couple of years ago and I thought it was just wet, slimy, treated pine because that's pretty much the only material that anybody builds anything with around the river in Louisiana. But it turns out it's a, it's a piece of oak. I don't know why it was floating in the river, but I think I can get enough material out of here to do the uh, stringers for the boat. So I'm going to uh, trim it up and plane it a little bit and uh, see if it's not usable. I think it's going to be just fine. And I know it's dry because I've had it for several years in the shed. So I went, ended up with um, two and a half inches deep by about one and five eighths inches thick for these uh, table supports. And that's a combination of what I could get out of this plank and what I think would look good. Um, <clears throat> pretty happy with the end result, but when you're doing this table design stuff or any kind of design, it's just what you think in, in your mind looks good and you look at a lot of pictures, you look on the internet, and you, you just kind of, it, it's either right or it's not right in my, in my opinion. And I see a lot of nice tables with some bad features and it's a shame because uh, little bitty things make a big difference when it comes to aesthetics. So I've got a joint that I like. I think it's gluable. Um, I've got some nails in the table to keep the boards lined up because the, the boards are on top of the pencil marks that they need to be on. And uh, I like that, and it was just kind of, I couldn't do the geometry, I couldn't do the math. I just trial and error until I, until I got it angles that I liked. Now this will be a butt joint, it won't be strong. We'll have to come back, and I'm either gonna embed a plate in the top, like a wishbone, or make a decorative plate on the side and screw it. I think that's what I'm leaning toward, but it's, I'm gonna glue, glue it like a butt joint, but that's not gonna be the, the end result. It's gonna have to be, um, stronger than that. It's going to have to be really strong. So I'm going to switch it around, cut the other end just like I cut this end. And I guess I should cut these to length before I go too far because they're like way long. And it's going to be easier to cut them now than later. I'm cutting the ends of the long center section of the, uh, I think they're called stretchers, the brace that goes under the table. And it's more than 45 so it doesn't really work on the miter saw. And for the same reason, it doesn't really work on a table saw because most table saw uh, uh, miter gauges don't turn that sharp. So I'm using a handsaw. And handsaws are great. They probably make more accurate cuts than power tools. Um, with power tools, you tend to make the cut and then take a look at it and see if it's okay because it's already done. With handsaws, you can kind of look at it as you go. Um, my problem is I don't see that great and my hands shake, so I have a little bit of hard, hard time with the handsaws. I should use them more, but in this case, it worked out really well and I got some really good joints on the end of this little brace. Okay, we have fittage, both ends fitting pretty well. It didn't happen first time, back and forth through the miter saw and until I got it where I like it and I have a way to clamp it. I have clampage and they are ready. I have some blue tape so the glue won't stick to the table. Mix up some epoxy and glue them. Now, this will be a very weak joint initially until I either put some dowels in it or route out some I don't know some drop-in uh, tenons I'm not sure what I'm gonna do but it will have to be very strong because it'll have people's feet on it and they'll be pushing on it so um, we're gonna brace it up don't you worry time for glue
we got a template and I accidentally cut one of the legs short so ignore the fact that it's crooked and I have these nice chunks of aluminum they're in the shape of letters but I can make them a different shape so I'm gonna cut these out and I'm gonna put a plate top and bottom but I'm gonna recess it so it's flush on the top and the bottom so I have two R's that work good the H and the N don't work as good but I have this flat piece of aluminum from a car underbody and it can work for the bottom pieces because they don't have to match so uh, I'm gonna get out the bandsaw and see if I can't cut these fairly straightly neatly so the porta band held in place with device turned out to be just awesome for doing this um, made a smooth cut it was nice and controlled it wasn't scary um, it had a little bit of a limited throat so you had to make a lot of <clears throat> extra cuts just to make room so you can get to what you wanted to cut and, it, and eventually I had to flip them over and cut them from the back because I just couldn't get to all the surfaces but in the end uh, it worked great no problems and I tried um, using soapy water as a lubricant it didn't really seem to make any difference whether I applied soapy water or not you just got to push real slow because aluminum tends to melt and get stuck in the um, teeth of the porta band blade and then it quits cutting so just took my time and I got all my cuts made and uh, nothing exciting happened which is the way I like it so I cut up the R and I got my first wishbone brace which will be let into the wood right here and I'm pretty sure a, a router bit with a bearing guide will finish the edge off so now we're going to do another top one for that side out of the same material and I'm going to use the less desirable flat aluminum for the two bottoms they should be the same size as this I laid my aluminum brace on top of the joint and scribed the three ends and I took a very sharp chisel and kind of you know cut those ends just a little bit just to give me a sharper line and a pencil mark and uh i've got the router depth set and here i'm double checking myself because i don't trust myself and made some final adjustments and then i removed the material um in the area the brace is going to go um sometimes when i do this and i should have done it in this case is put a bigger base on the router because once you get started only half of the router is being supported by the wood the other half is over the hole so it's real easy to tip the router and get a botched up surface but what I tended to do here was to leave a little bit of wood every now and then to kind of support the router and at the end with a sharp chisel it was really easy to go back and just knock those off and finish off the, I didn't route exactly to the line I left uh, 16th or an eighth and then chiseled those off and I got um, where the aluminum plate fit pretty pretty well. I was happy with my cuts. First of four braces is it installed. Dry. I'm going to take it off and put epoxy when I get the other three done. Um, the, the depth came out real good. It feels good. This uh, shiny surface will be sanded off. And I'm counting on being able to do the edges with a router and a guide bearing. If not, i got a lot of filing to do. But either way... The edges will sm be smooth in the end, so pretty stoked with that. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to get the other one on. I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom ones. Okay. So the router did, in fact, cut the aluminum, and it really, you hardly hear the, the sound difference between when you get from wood to aluminum. It just cuts it pretty easily. But one mistake I did make make plenty of mistakes but this is one of them when I countersunk screw heads some of them are not quite totally deep enough so the screw head sticks up a little bit you can't really feel it um, but when I went to sand the surface flat you could see it um, but by that time I had epoxy to plate on and the screws are embedded in epoxy and they won't come out I broke two of them trying to get them out so um, I guess you know shame on me I should have double checked that they were really flush but so what what I did was I turned the thing upside down and I'm putting those on the bottom I think it'd be alright 
Sanding, sanding, sanding. I can make a 50 hour video of sanding and it's pretty dull and monotonous. Um, but I did want to sand these corners before I installed them where I could just roll it around on the bench. It makes it a little easier to get to. And with the double wishbone uh, stringer finally out of the way, I'm um, filling holes with epoxy. I've mixed epoxy with some sawdust to give it a little bit of a color. And this is the bottom, so it really doesn't matter, but I kind of want to sample. I want to see how it's going to look sanded and varnished in case we might need to change something up. All right, with the double wishbone all glued up where it's not going to move, we got it set under the bottom of the table um, at the right height, and I got it centered back where it's supposed to be. And this seemed like something simple, but this took forever because every time I'd move one end, a quarter of an inch, it'd screw up the other end. So I ended up um, putting these verticals with some clamps just to try to stabilize it a little bit. So now it is uh, exactly where it needs to go and it is the right height and location. So now when I take the legs and slide them where they need to go, I can scribe this and this and I can cut the end off. I'll probably leave it a little long for now. And I got a joint here because this is wider than the hole it has to go in. So I'm gonna have to put a tendon on the end. So I'm, I can mark all of them and take all these contraptions down and uh, start trying to cut those tenons to fit. Um, my original game plan was to put this together and be able to work on it and the table at the same time, but that's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna have to finish the leg structure and get it out of here, go put it in the carport probably. So I got my first joint. First joint's always the hardest. Let me show you how I did it. Um, this oak is real chippy, so it was kind of challenging. But anyway, I took one of the drops. I cut these, you know, roughly the length. And I took one of the drops, and I played with the router depth until I got it where if I take the same amount off of each side, I get a good fit. So that was the first step. And then I made this real intricate template router guide that sits on top of here and I clamp it down but first this is where the bit's gonna cut so I need to scoot it over to right there and then I clamp it down and then uh, it guides the router and I, then I remove all that and that's it um, then I cleaned up the cheeks with my little hand plane and a, a chisel because uh, this stuff doesn't route well it's real chippy it's not anything like the Cypress. But we'll do that um, three more times and I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue these up together. And now I have all the oak fillers in place and all the joints cut. I am ready to glue. And I had leftover board from here so the grain would have matched perfectly. But I botched it. I planed it too thin. So this is from the same um, plank. It's just not quite the same match as good as it was. But it's going to be black anyway. So it'll be all right. So uh, I've got to go get a bunch of clamps and... Uh, we're going to clamp it all up and be done for a couple hours. So jump ahead a few hours. The um, glue is cured. The clamps are removed. And I'm taking the router with the flush cut bit and flushing out all my little blocks that I glued in there that I glue extra big and flush cut because it's just kind of the way I like to do it. Um, for me, it works out better. For other people, they might want to get the blocks cut perfectly and not have to do this step. But this is me, not you, or them, or they, or her. This is just me. Clamps off, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I need a board that I don't have here, so I'm stuck for the day. I will bring home one from the foundry tomorrow, and it is a scaffold board. 
and it is heavy enough and long enough to run around the perimeter. I think you call that an apron. Um, I don't have anything here suitable and have the perfect board at the foundry. So we'll just wait till tomorrow. So I brought home an old scaffold plank to rip up to make the um, aprons. And this is good stuff. This is number one, Southern Yellow Pine, straight grain. It's just good stuff. Um, and it's marked correctly. It says uh, meets OSHA standards. It doesn't say OSHA approved because OSHA has never and will never approve anything. They just set standards and it's up to you to meet their standards. So I'm gonna rip this up into two inch strips and cut them to fit the, uh, the length and we're gonna glue them in place and it'll be epoxy. So that'll be the end of today. Okay, so I ripped up that timber, that scaffold board, into aprons, um, planed both sides, cut the ends to 45, and I have a setup here for clamps so that'll work. I got them all dry fit. So I'm going to epoxy these joints and clamp them. And I know this won't be the strongest joint in the world, or it won't be very strong at all, but it'll be strong enough for me to flip the table over and brace the joint. Similar to what I did here. I just glued it and after the fact I braced it. So we're going to do an after the fact brace. And at this point, I really, really will be able to get the legs off the tabletop so I can work on the tabletop. So we're going to mix up some glue, do some clamping. Everything fits lovely. So Colin came by. I got him to help me flip the table, but it wasn't very long. Um, the, the epoxy didn't have enough cure time so I left the clamps on it when I flipped it over so now we're taking all the clamps off and we're ready for the um, bracing of the joints. So we're getting ready to fire up the router to remove some weakness from this corner joint. Um, right now it's just a butt joint, glued butt joint which is nothing to brag about. We need some mechanical assistance. So got this piece of plywood, put a straight edge on it and put a stop on each end which is just a screw and I took my plunge router and plunged through the plywood following the straight edge from screw to screw. So I know where the joint's gonna be. It's gonna be exactly where that hole is in the plywood, which makes it real easy. So then I have a center mark on the plywood and I have um, a 45 degree pencil mark marked on the table legs. So it um, makes it kind of idiot proof. I just line up the center line and I line up one edge of the hole in the plywood with the 45 degree mark and I get the router with the same bit, the same setup, I haven't changed anything and it's a plunge router so um, you push it down a little bit and you go side to side and then you push it down a little more and you go side to side and it has a preset stop so when you get to the bottom you're done and this leaves a beautiful uh, slot for a um, I would call it a loose tenon to be epoxied in and that will make a very very strong joint. So while I had the router out and I used the same little jig to um, cross cut two mortises into each um, apron for some crossbars that are going to go in there. Um, the little jig just made it so easy just clamp it in place and follow the straight edge and you got a nice straight little mortise. So for the tenons, I use um, vertical grain um, pine. It's very old. It was actually flooring. But I like pine. It's not brittle like hardwood. It's just about impossible to break. It glues well. It's uh, super stable because it's like got 100 growth rings to the inch. So on the table saw, I cut the width to fit the slot. And then I cut the height just a little bit taller than the slot. And I cut the length. But the slot has rounded in, so I had to... Um, just clamp my um, belt sander up here on the table and I rounded the edges over and fit them all into place and they'll be ready to glue in or they are ready to glue in after I do this. So as of right now the only wood I need to add to the table and the legs or, or the legs will be these wood plugs to cover two screws I'm going to put in each one of these joints. Everything else is assembled. Um, what we need now is uh, sanding, 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 
uh, routing the edges around. And the tabletop, I'm going to put a special edge on, and I don't have that figured out yet, but that's going to be a wood removal project, not a wood adding project. So the, the table is built. Just needs to be shaped and prettied up and finished. I did a sample table edge, and it's been approved by the new table owner. So it's just basically a 15 degree angle and a couple of round over bits. Um, problem is that typical, I did this standing up in the table saw, but there's no way I can stand up this in the table saw. And the typical skill saw only rotates to 45 degrees or so. So to make it work, I would have to cut it like this a ways and hold the saw steady at the same time that ain't happening so the thing I'm gonna try to do is mount a base plate a 90 degree base plate up here so I can ride this and let this ride across the top of the table um, this is a rip fence from an old table saw that I used to have that didn't come with a rip fence but I think if I get it in the right spot and bolt it then I can just use this and guide the saw down the side of the table and uh, I think that'll work so I'll try to get this thing straight try to get this all straightened out and just drill and put a couple of bolts through that aluminum foot it needs to if it were to move in the middle of a cut that would be just like the worst thing in the world because I'd put a big gouge in the side of the table so let's work on that so welcome to the bevel master 3000 I um, have it clamped. I have it in the spot that I think it needs to go. I'm doing a test run on a little plank here. This is real awkward because there's really not enough surface area to balance it on. I want to make sure I had it adjusted right before I drilled and bolted it to the um, to the guide. I got it clamped right now and I don't trust the clamps for working with the tabletop. But uh, it worked and uh, I have it adjusted right. I just need to bolt it. take that so good success with the bevel master 3000 um, on this cut toward the end I was probably pushing it a little hard the blade got probably a little hot and started to wander a little bit and then I went through a knot and the blade wandered more so um, I do have one little divot toward the end that sanded out okay but other than that the, the cuts are pretty much perfect I just pushed it a little too hard on this set Nice day for inside job. Raining cats and dogs. So that worked way better than I expected. Um, I got one little spot where I think the blade got hot and it kind of didn't want to go straight and I should have stopped quicker than I did, but it's no big deal. It took like an eighth of an inch to divot it out so I can just clean that out. But uh, I was nervous as I could be, but it came out okay. Now it's time for a lot of sanding and planing and some round over bits in the router. So I don't really know if I made this clear, but obviously this is the bottom of the table. The bevel's on the bottom of the table. The top of the table will be flat.
So now that I've installed those screws in these little cross braces and plugged them with wood plugs, uh, there's no more carpentry to be done. All the wood that's going to be is done. And now there's a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of sanding and rounding over with the router bit and a lot of finishing. But the table is basically built. The legs and the top has the first coat on it or a seal coat on the bottom anyway. So next video, we're going to put some finish on it and, and uh, wrap this thing up or we'll be uh, installing the trolling motor on the boat or I'll be messing with my leaky cylinder on my forklift. But there will be a next video. I just don't know which order they're going to come in. So thanks for watching.